I'm David. Thank you for joining me in this How to Play video of Crokono. Crokono is part of our project to do videos on the top 100 family games according to Board Game Geek users. Crokono is in the top 10 as of September 2019. And you can see there's a reason why we weren't able to put it back here on the table. So it's very simple rules, but if you have this version, which was released by Mayday Games, you'll see that there is a couple of small words that can make it difficult to play correctly. So I had to actually look up different rules online. So let me point that out to you if you happen to have this version. Uh, this is the one that was shipped about two years ago. I don't know if they improved their yearbook since then. But when you play the, look at the rules here. You'll see right here on number six. If there are opposing discs on the player's surface, the shooter may attempt. The word should not be may, it should be must. So replace that may with must. And then there's another spot where it says may. If the board contains no opposing discs, the shooter may attempt to land a disc on the center. It should say must attempt. So I wanted to point that out because when I first read it, I was thinking that you had the option to do it. But when you look up other rules, you don't. So again, if you have this rule book, replace those two words of may with must and it will probably make more sense. So let's go over the rules real quick. If you're playing with two players, you're going to start out with 12 discs, discs each. So here is my 12 discs and here is the other player's 12 discs. It does come with a nice scoring where each uh, circle or peg is five points. So there's up to 100 on this side and 100 on the other side. Now, obviously, you'd have to have it off to the side until somebody scores their first five points, but we just put them here so they don't roll off. Inside, though, you have additional two more pieces if you're going to play team play. So when you look, you sit across from each other, and this is my quadrant. This would be Julie's quadrant right here. When you take turns, so I must place my first piece anywhere on this edge up to over half of the first line. I must, because one of her, I'm shooting first and none of her pieces are on the board, I must try to land my piece in the center ring or in the very center here. If I get in here, it's worth 20 points and it will be removed and put off to the side to remind me that I scored 20 points. That way it's cleared up for someone else to get it in there. So I must shoot it and flick it and land it within the circle. Now I can cross the line. If it completely crosses the line or lands somewhere else, it will be removed. So I must land it in the 15 point ring. It can be across the line, which means it would still count, but it'd be in the 10 point ring. So if you touch the line, it counts as points in the other ring. Here is 20, 15, 10, 5, and if it's any touch the line over here, it's out. You put it in the gutter. So again, if it's on this line, it's worth 5. If it's on this line, it's worth 10. This line, it's in the gutter, it's out. So I must try to get it in here. If I overshoot it, it's removed. All right, but say I got here. Now Julie, having to go next, she must hit my piece. So she, she tries to do that. She missed. Because she missed, it would be removed. Let's say she had two pieces in here. She still must try to hit this piece. She could try to ricochet it. So if she ricocheted it like that, she'd be okay. But let's say she shot it and she missed it. This piece is out or if she shot it, ricocheted it and didn't hit my piece, both pieces would be out. So whatever the case is, when she flicks, she must have one, her, one of her pieces hit one of my pieces. I could have more than one piece in here. She must hit at least one of them to be a valid play. Now let's say I didn't have any pieces in. She still must try to hit it into the center. Let's say though, she has a piece out here. She hits this piece, still misses the center, and that piece gets ricocheted off. Both pieces would be removed. 
because she did not get it in the center. There's actually a specific rule here that explains more about that. If no disc comes to rest in the specific area, all discs contacted are removed to the ditch until the end of the round. So, in that example, she flicks it, hits it like this, ricochets off like this, and it stops here. No disc came to rest in the center, and any disc that of the, the one that she shot and touched other ones would be removed. So that's the danger of when you're by yourself, trying to get in the center, if you mess up and you ricochet off your own, you can end up removing uh, more than one piece. So the game, uh, players take turns, and then uh, you sh after they shot all 12 discs, you see how scoring works. So let's say it was like this at the end. So I have 15 points here. Julie has 10 because it's on the line, and this one's 10. So we, this is also 10, so I remove these two. So Julie had 5 and 10, and I had 15. These are removed because a 15 minus 15 is 0. But Julie did get one in the center. So she would go up 5, 10, 15, 20, and in this version of the game, the first to 100 wins. The players will now switch who goes first. So if I went first, Julie would go. And then we would play as many rounds as it takes until one person gets 100. So that's the how to play Crokinole. There are some uh, variations for three players and four players. And... Uh, there might even be something for tournament rules here, but I'm not too sure how that works. You would have to look up different rules online or look in the rule book here. So anyways, that's the how to play of Crokinole. Please check out our review and our playthrough.